What's going on YouTube? Uberman here. Wait, who the hell is Uberman? <laughs> another day, another Copart walk around. Hope you guys are going to enjoy this one. We got the uh, the GoPro back in the house. Thank God my new adapter literally came in today. Unfortunately, I left my paper list at home and that list tells me the order of the cars that I'm supposed to be reviewing to make things a lot more streamlined and efficient. Since I don't have that list, this is going to take me a whole lot longer to produce this video. So. We're just going to go ahead and jump into this and get started. It looks like the first thing on my list, on my phone, <laughs> my phone is not organizing these properly. And the first thing is going to be a 2013 Dodge Journey. So it looks like we're going to start out with a little bit of carnage today. So let's jump right into it. So you know how I'm always telling you to come out here and look at these cars in person because sometimes they're just a whole lot worse in person than you can see in the pictures. Well, in this case, it kind of looks like the opposite. In the pictures, this thing looked like it had significant damage. Don't get me wrong, it does. But in the pictures, it appeared to be a lot worse than what it actually is. Blown bags, of course. So, and you gotta love these Dodges, man. A lot of these newer cars, you blow the bags in the dash, you gotta replace the entire dashboard. It's a real pain in the, pain in the arse. Here's your typical Dodge 2.4 that's been in existence for practically ever. Interesting hit here. Uh, so many of these cars, I always wonder what, what, what was it they hit? You know what I mean? Maybe they hit another car, but I don't know because as you can see down here, the, uh, the axle is literally pulled out of the transmission. Um, hmm. Says it runs. It's got some damage. To me, this looks perfectly fixable. Maybe it's got twisted frame rails. Okay, so yeah, you can see right here. Hopefully you can see right here. This has been tweaked. I can't see how far back that goes. And there's an air box underneath it. So yeah, I can definitely see the frame rail down there. I don't know if you can or not, but the frame rail is definitely tweaked on this side. And since the impact was on this side, it's going to be even more tweaked over here. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to... You're not going to see that on video, I don't think, but if this was Mike, he'd say, Randy, it's just metal, man. It's just metal. It can all be fixed. Ugh. Can we get anything to come on? No, we cannot. Dead is a doornail. Be prepared for that. Okay, well, since it's not going to run... There's not really much more we can talk about on this one, is there? Not a bad looking journey. It's really not. I'm not a big Dodge fan, to be quite honest with you, but this isn't bad. I like it. Here we got a 2015 Chrysler 200S. And wow. You know, this is a, this is great video content to show your kids, you know, when your children are getting out there and they're gonna start driving around Stuff like this is scary. You know, it makes me think about my own children, and I hope that they're smart enough not to, uh, and I'm not saying that this was a, a kid that was reckless driving or anything like that. I'm not even implying that. I'm just saying that, you know, these videos, whether it was this person's fault or someone else's fault, doesn't really matter. Showing, showing your children the carnage, I think could really help drive home how uh, important it is to focus on the road, to drive safe, and to not, not be an idiot because it really shows you these cars are not indestructible. As safe as they are, they will mangle. It's all metal, you know, metal and plastic. I guarantee you these things will break. You know, as safe as your kid might feel driving whatever car they're in, the fact of the matter is, is you get speed involved in a collision, it'll break. It looks like this one's not too bad on the inside, aside from the blown bags, of course. The outside, I don't think I'd even attempt to do anything with this one. Yet another Carnage vehicle. It seems like a lot of the Carnage vehicles, they have moved. Um, I think they're changing the way they organize cars here. Um, but it looks like a lot of the Carnage vehicles are sitting over here where I would typically begin doing my co-part walk around. So we'll see if it continues that way. Wow. Man, oh man. 
I wonder if this person ran into like a bridge, you know, a guardrail or something. We recently had a lot of really, uh, a lot of really bad ice and snow. Look at this. Look how jagged this is. <sighs> Oklahoma, man. People just don't know how to drive on that stuff. I wonder if this is from that. All right, moving forward. And here we have an 05 Chevy Colorado. Again, more carnage, man. I mean, I guess it's Copart, so you kind of expect to see wrecked cars, right? I mean, why else would you watch these videos? Ugh. Man, oh man. So this is that Vortec five cylinder, right? Ugh, let's see. Yeah, the 3500, this is the five cylinder, if I remember correctly. I didn't even know this motor existed, and I, I'm a GM guy. I had no idea. I thought that uh, they only came in the straight six. I didn't know they had a straight five until uh, I came out here and saw one in a Hummer. And then you guys schooled me and said they come in the Hummer and they come in the Chevy Colorado as well. So this is a no start, uh, and I'm not going to try to start it. Um, but I would like to see if the dash comes on, if any lights come on, anything like that. Whoa, no, no. I accidentally turned the key there. I wasn't trying to do that. There we go. Okay, yeah, we got a lot of lights. 219,000 miles. Wow, that's a lot of miles. This is a, uh, yeah, this is, I was going to say this could be a good little truck. I mean, if you're just going to use it for scrap or hauling junk or something this could be a great little truck this could be totally put back together i don't think it'll go back together very well but <laughs> it could be it could be put back together uh i'm certain the motor turned out okay i think the motor's fine i bet even the valve cover survived yeah i don't know if you can see down there but i don't see any uh i don't see anything severe or serious down there the fender apron is definitely wrinkled but not too bad core support is totally shot and everything associated with it but uh you know it's fixable but then again hey you know what's it going to cost to put this thing back together it may not uh may not be worth it but for the right diyer i think this could be a great truck for somebody comment below what do you think here we have a 2016 mustang gt i've had two of these i had a 15 gt performance pack in ruby red that's the six speed and uh brimbo brakes and all that that was a great car and then i bought a 17 mustang gt automatic so that my fiance could drive and enjoy this very powerful coyote engine this is a phenomenal car and i'll be honest with you i don't care if you get an automatic or you get a stick shift but i really i think everybody should experience driving one of these cars right here this is an amazing it's an amazing vehicle really is i i really love it i do miss it and i love this ruby red color man it's a beautiful color now this says that it starts the rest of the car looks looks pretty good Fifty thousand miles i don't see anything uh i mean maybe i'm not looking hard enough but man it's such a beautiful car i'm a little confused as to why it's why it's totaled this car is still worth some money and look this top piece here it's not your core support it's kind of like your header panel i mean it obviously needs a bumper it needs this top panel right here which just bolts right on this unless there's something underneath you know some kind of undercarriage damage that we're not seeing this is totally fixable All right, you look at the windshield here. You see it's got an S, so that means it will start, assuming the battery's charged anyway. All right, you got blown bags on the driver's side. The seat bag is good. You've got the knee bolster and the wheel bag blown. And look, you've even got some extra parts in the back seat there. So this is an automatic, and this looks like it's the premium package. Oh, we got a, is that a blown bag there too? that's the glove box something something sketchy happened there i guess that is an airbag i don't know i'm not sure what that is i assume it's the airbag i didn't know there was one in the glove box though all right 
So foot on the brake, it's got the shaker audio system and it's dead as a doornail as well. Well, that's a shame. I really wanted to hear this thing fire up. This is one that I would definitely take a chance on. This doesn't look like there'd be anything to rebuilding it. I also don't see the key. That's interesting. Oh, there's the key right there. There's the key. Yeah, nothing at all. It's dead. All right, well, either way, I still think it was worth showing you guys on video. It's a beautiful car. Comment below, tell me what you think of the Mustang GTs. Here we have a 2007 Dodge Nitro. And I, I, <laughs> I'll admit it, although I'm not a big fan of Dodge, I like Dodge trucks, and I also like the Dodge Nitro. I had one of these, I believe it was called the Dodge Nitro RT. It was black with 20 inch chrome rims. And it was a great, solid, reliable vehicle, at least for me. I'm just speaking for personal experience here. 182,000 miles. Mine obviously didn't have near that many miles. Mine was uh, like 40, 50,000 miles when I got it a long time ago. So we got some damage to the front grille here and the damage may go even further. It, it's good to look under here. I know it's dark, but I don't see anything that shows me that we've got any substantial leaks. There is a dark spot down there, but I'm not seeing anything that looks like it punctured these or anything showing that it's leaking. You've got your radiator, you've got your transmission cooler, you've got your air conditioning uh, condenser core up there. So believe me, if something gets ruptured, you're gonna see it. So she's definitely got some miles on her, but this thing is sitting at $500 right now, you know? And well, it's got RT seats. Is this an RT? Oh, they, these are the 20s, okay. All right, it's got the 20s. So this is, this is probably a, a real RT. There you go, it's got the four liter. This is listed as a run and drive. <laughs> Lots of pineapples. What does that mean? As if I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. I'm trying to work harder to make this a kid-friendly channel, but uh, I think we know what that means. All right, let's see what we got going on under the hood here. Oh, look, this is impressive. This is a powerhouse, man. This four liter is insanely powerful. I'm just kidding. Okay, so the radiator is broken. You can see that the radiator neck is snapped clean off of it. So it does look like a few things got pushed back in here. This is all very, some of these cars, guys, listen to me. Some of these cars you can get at a really, really good price and they require minimal, minimal amounts of work. Like, okay, a grill, whoop de doo put a freaking grill on it. In fact, this is probably more than just a grill. I'm guessing this is the whole, yeah, it's the whole panel up here, but the grill is housed within it. This is no big deal. Man, I'm stealing things from Mike and Goon Squad now. It's no big deal. You replace the plastics up here, replace the grill, and definitely replace the radiator, headlight, corner light assembly here. This, I wouldn't even replace this. This is something I would repair, put right back on it, and you're done. You don't even need a bumper on this. You don't even need a bumper. So as I said, it's listed as a run and drive, and it's 500 bucks right now. The interior is decent, and it smells like pineapple. Oh wait, no, that's it smells like black little trees is what it smells like. Let's see if we can get it to start up. We will not run it for long. It's not going to. Dag nab it. <laughs> ah, that sucks. All right. Well, it's got the touch screen. It's got Sirius XM. We got a, a pumpkin up here. That's interesting. Lots of trees. Hmm, pineapples and trees. What does all this mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand. Unfortunately, that's all we're going to get out of this one because... There's just nothing left to uh, to do since it won't fire up. But I have no doubt this thing will run just fine. And these things are, I swear this is this is a gimmick. I mean, really? Do you really need something that slides out so you can sit your groceries here instead of just reaching in? I mean, think about it. You got a handful of groceries, you got to put them in your car. Are you really going to be like, oh, let me let me pull my uh, my handy dandy grocery thing here out and? Uh, come on now if you if you're gonna take the time to pull this out you're just gonna sit it in your car I mean that's the, that's a gimmick that's ridiculous come on Dodge you gotta do better than that all right so this is nothing to write home about but we have an 03 Dodge Neon I've honestly always loved these cars I can't explain why they're not known to be reliable they're not particularly good looking but I've always loved 
the Dodge Neon. So here we have a 2003 Neon. It's got bald tires, the front bumper. Obviously it was in some kind of a front end collision. Headlight is mounted, but it, you know, got a slight gap here that you can fit your whole hand into. So this is listed as a no start, no odometer. And it's 350 bucks. Buy it now. Now the interior doesn't smell particularly bad and these dashboards are notorious for breaking into pieces. This has got a really nice dash. These seats, this is normal. They, they look absolutely horrible. It takes a lot of scrubbing, but you can get them cleaned up. The back tire on this side looks all right. And the back tire on this side is acceptable got crank windows which I actually like that because they uh, they tend to not break I may I may buy this one why don't you comment below and tell me if I should buy uh, boy the hood is uh, uh there we go if I should buy the old Dodge Neon now unfortunately there's no odometer these things are <laughs> the Dodge Neon is known for so many problems um, head gaskets being being a primary one and failing automatic transmissions also being another big one um, and then you got the fact that this is a timing belt motor and a lot of people just don't maintain the timing belts on these cars so I'm gonna put the prop rod in here I'm gonna take a little bit closer of a look well, this thing is just in horrible shape under here so it looks like although it wasn't an accident it doesn't look like anything up here has been damaged this is a replacement headlight assembly by TYC and you can see it's it's broken so it wouldn't fit anyway yeah all the brackets are broken so this is fixable Let's see what else we got here we got a coolant hose that doesn't look like it could possibly hold any coolant because they've put the hose too far over this ridge right here <laughs> so I'm not certain it could hold coolant like that um, the transmission dipstick is partly open it wasn't shut all the way so ah uh, and here's what I'm talking about, boys and girls. That bright pink transmission fluid. That's a, that's a pretty good sign right there. And look how loose the dipstick is. I would be willing to bet, I would put money on it, that somebody has changed this transmission. I would, uh, I would seriously bet money on that. Somebody's been under here, somebody changed the transmission, and maybe they, ch maybe they changed it with one from Pull Apart. They went through all the trouble to change the transmission. They got a bad one. Put it in and they said, you know, screw it. It's going to the auction. Check the oil. Oil is black. But the oil doesn't look too bad. Check under the valve cover here. And yeah, the ones I'm really interested in, these are the ones I'm going to check. I always check inside the motor. I check the oil cap for any kind of uh, varnish or milkshake. See if we can pop this. I'm, I'm pretty certain there's not going to be any coolant in it. The, the cap is a little wet. It's a little wet in there too. But I definitely don't see any coolant in this car. Power steering looks good. I would almost bet that this thing would run. Look at that. Nasty. Ah, look at this. Someone has worked on the timing belt. Oh, that time belt is in bad shape, folks. Whew, I don't know if you can see this or not, but they left the front of the timing belt off, the cover. So you can see the timing belt, and it is just, it is riddled with cracks. That thing is in horrible, horrible condition. Yeah, so for $350, most likely you're looking at a bad transmission. And on top of that, you got a timing belt that's on its last legs and you got bald tires i'd be willing to bet they didn't even try to put a booster pack on this i don't know maybe they did i don't see keys for this either without keys yeah i could swear this thing said that it had keys on the listing i may need to look at that again all right so here's the listing and it's buy it now for 350 bucks. And if you go over here to information on the very side here where this little eye is, you scroll down, you can see it says keys, yes. So 
says it's got them maybe someone picked them up i was really considering picking this up but if it's got no keys i'm not going to touch it here's a little more carnage 2013 ford escape i mean we can clearly see the frame rails here so that's good news right <laughs> wow wow now the nice thing is these are the crash bar sections so these actually unbolt from the frame so the frame rails may be okay this is a uh, this is a pretty gnarly accident though it's taken out the uh, intake of the engine along with pretty much everything in front of it that's an intercooler down there so this must be turbocharged that's interesting i didn't know the ford escape came with a turbo that's actually pretty nice i like this it's listed as a no start no run so we're not going to attempt to fire it up this is pretty clean i like it a ford escape se yeah eco boost baby eco boost The rest of the car is in excellent condition. Just the front end. You can see the gaps here, of course. Look at this. Yeah, gaps aren't so good. Gaps aren't so good. Hey, this is another one. It could be fixed. I don't think it's worth it at this point. Yeah, there's so much up here that has been damaged. It's more than just fixing a hood and a bumper and, and, and things like that. The crash bar, the headlights. Like We've got engine damage back here that probably look at this battery see what i mean the damage goes really far back so yeah and on top of that you've got the body work and everything else as well so just not worth it at least not from my perspective this isn't something that i would be interested in at this point here we got a 2014 hyundai elantra and you know in the pictures i thought hey this is uh this is not so bad Oh yeah. yeah, this is this is this is real bad. <laughs> this is this is really really bad. Look at this. Yeah, I mean it took a hit way over here to the side, which you know you would think, oh, it's just a fender bender, right? I mean the frame is right here. The frame rail looks good. Um, suspension, however, I mean you can see just from the way this wheel's sitting, there is going to be some pretty significant suspension damage under there. Not that that's a huge deal. I mean, suspension isn't that difficult. It looks like the control arm has just folded over on itself. So, yeah, that's cheap and easy stuff to fix. Um, but, <laughs> but, you could see where this piece right here used to be welded over here. And it's ripped off along with the headlight and everything. And there's computer components under here. Pieces of the headlight way over here that are ripped. Lots of broken fiberglass yeah it ran right up under something right up under it the door has got pretty decent damage obviously the fender is shot 54,000 miles on the clock i'm surprised that it doesn't run though i really am i mean i don't really see anything that should stop it from running unless oh uh, the hood is broken and jammed so we can't even peek under there to try to get an idea yeah it's it's locked so we can't even get under there to take a look at this sucks this sucks <sighs> the rest of the car however it's really nice it's a really nice looking hyundai elantra and i've owned uh god i've owned three of these i love these cars too these are great solid reliable vehicles man they really are how about 2007 bmw 328i all right, this is this is just straight up carnage is what this is. This isn't something I'd actually be interested in. It's a bio car, which when I first started looking at Copart cars, I didn't want anything to do with bio, you know, blood or, and it can go beyond blood, folks. Let's let's just call a spade a spade here. Bio could mean, you know, it's just some blood. It could be vomit. It could be mold. It could be mildew. It could be, uh, you know, part of a scalp. There could be skin. There could be, you know, biological. <laughs> That's just, let's just leave it at that. Stuff in this car. And, okay, I don't really, I don't see, I don't see any like significant signs of blood or anything anywhere. What I do see though, and this is a, I'll give you this example right now of what can cause a car to be bio. 
Now obviously you've got to contend with the wreck and this is a uh, this is pretty substantial but when you throw in a wreck uh, we can't get in. Someone has replaced the locking mechanism with a bolt. <laughs> a bolt and a nut for the lock on the passenger side. See stuff like that tells me this car was probably not well maintained anyway uh, but I'll, I'll lean over here and I'll show you what most likely the bio is. The food and liquids all over the floor. That is most likely why this car is a bio. Cigarette ashes all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, rotten food can cause a car to be listed as a bio car. But like I said, you know, the chips aren't a big deal, but fixing this, yeah, good luck. And here we have a 2018 Nissan Titan. And I don't know what this thing ran into, but it ran into it really, really hard. This front end used to come out to like here. <laughs> All right, maybe even further out than that. This, uh, look at this. Look how everything was just folded over. And then you look up here and you see all of this. There's lots of bricks and what looks like mortar, brick and mortar. More brick. And the windshield is completely collapsed. This is a Cummins turbo diesel. Okay, yet again, see, I learned something new every time I come to Coport. I did not know that a Nissan Titan came with a Cummins turbo diesel. I was completely clueless. Wow. Wow. Look at the shards of glass everywhere, folks. I mean, whoever was in this, they had to be just covered in glass. Man. Wow. Look around the rest of the truck. Oh, the back window's blown out too. That was a hell of an impact. Unfortunately, I can't uh, I can't get over this way because it's too tight. Oh, there was uh, something back here. Look, it crushed the toolbox. So they had something very heavy back here, and when it came to an abrupt halt, it just smashed right through this toolbox. Some bolt cutters, lots of tools back there. Let's walk around the other side and see if we can get a closer look if I can do it without getting my self cut up. Wow, man. I think this side is even worse. There's the battery. Good night. Wow. What did you run into, guy? Okay, I thought maybe it would be crunched on the back too, but it's not. Man. I do wonder what these people hit. Well, I'd sure love to go over there and look at some of those cars. Those cars look really screwed up. Uh, too bad. That area is off limits. There's a truck literally cut like in half. My God. I need to get that higher uh, higher access level card to get in here, man. <laughs> Copart, hook me up. Hook me up with a with a higher level security clearance so I can go check out some of that stuff. All right, let's move on. Here's a 2018 Dodge Journey. Another Dodge Journey. Look at this. I mean, folks, if you got kids, I urge you to let them see let them see some some of this carnage man i mean i know i was a kid i remember i used to street race cars that i mean were barely limping along you know these are cars that shouldn't even been on the road and i'm sitting there trying to street race everybody and you know it's just something kids do you know especially boys with their with their testosterone just going crazy you know wanting to prove their you know what is bigger than somebody else's this is how this stuff can end up man it is 
kids need to see this they do they need to really understand that cars are dangerous not just to themselves but to others as well i mean if they don't care enough about other people to drive in a safe manner then you know at least care enough about your own survival because stuff like this you don't always walk away from otherwise well i was gonna say otherwise great looking vehicle but then you got this so you know just overall this thing is this thing is toast look at all the mud in here wow look at this pillar hold on i missed this i missed this look over here at this pillar ow look at that look at this mangled a pillar and I hope you guys enjoyed that shot because I just got glass all up in my hand doing that for you. That sucked. I just love little shards of glass. Here we have a 2009 Toyota Camry. Lots of carnage today, guys. This isn't how I usually do my videos, but uh, I, I don't know why there's so much carnage this week. But there is, and when there is, I want to show it. I really do. I mean, looking at some of these wrecks is, is a, I, I can't even explain the feeling when you walk by some of these cars and you see them like this. And I mean, you're pretty certain there were people inside of them, you know, especially seeing that it's got blown bags. You can be fairly certain there were people in this car and all you can do is hope that I look at this impact. I mean, it, it literally just, it, it took the whole top of, the, of, of everything. Here's the frame rails, all right? Here's the frame rails. Here's the crash bar. The entire engine, everything that used to be up here, plowed it out. Gone. Just gone. So this was a, this is a hell of a hit. This was a really, really hard hit. I mean, look at the dashboard. If there was a passenger on this side of the car, I, I don't know that they walked away from that. The firewall has been pushed into where your knees would be. You know what I mean? Look at the roof. Crumpled, crumpled, crumpled. A-pillar completely shifted and bent. Firewall and sh the, the strut towers, everything, shoved into the passenger compartment. Now, this is one of those wrecks that you just don't know. You just don't know if someone was able to walk away from this. You hope they did, though, you know? And that's a Toyota Camry, man. That's a safe car. But that just goes back to what I've been telling you all along. It doesn't matter how safe these cars are. You get enough speed behind them. There's nothing the car can do to protect you. This used to be a 2014 Ford Explorer Sport. And, and yet again... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this much damage, this much carnage out here at Copar all at, at one time. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm literally damn near speechless and that, ask my fiance, that rarely happens. That rarely happens. Uh, this is just, uh, I don't even know. So much carnage. I, don't, I just, I hope to God there was nobody in the passenger front of this car. Look at the A pillar. 90 degrees, folks. 90 degrees. Look at the roof buckle up here. Look at this. If there was somebody up here, oh my. I mean, even the driver compartment's in pretty bad shape. But the passenger is just... This engine has been turned almost sideways. Look at this. In fact, it has. The crankshaft is right there. There's the crankshaft down there in the timing chain. Look, here's the transmission. The transmission's facing the front of the car. 
the whole front of the car basically has just been shifted almost completely sideways. Here's the frame rail. Here's the frame rail right here. This frame rail, there it is right there. Look at the crease there. Can you see it right there? It goes out and then it goes over. This frame rail used to be straight, bent completely in half along with everything that attaches. I'm not even sure the human body could survive an impact this significant. Your organs can only take so many G's, right? At which point, poof, they're done. And, and, and this, this was a hell of an impact. Here's a little Toyota Prius. Now it doesn't look the greatest, obviously. She's seen a lot of highway miles, 236,000 miles on the odometer. But that does not scare me when it comes to a Prius. Now I bought a first gen Prius from Copart a while back as an enhance. I took a risk on it, it was not a run and drive. It was also a donation. I took it home, got a jump. In fact, I didn't even take it home. I, I had him towed it out to the lot out front. I put a jump on it, it fired right up. I drove the thing everywhere for a good couple of weeks. And it was a great car. All right, so a moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. The Prius made it home. It did. Um, for the life of me, I can't tell you why this was there. It absolutely made it home with no issue. People, there's no check engine lights, no airbag. There's no warning lights of any kind whatsoever nothing and eventually i ended up selling it to some kid of teenager his first car he said he really wanted something solid reliable and fuel efficient so he bought my prius and that was that i have loved the toyota prius ever since and now i have a third gen so i'm not afraid of a high mileage prius i'm not afraid of bad batteries that's that seems to be everybody's big fear with these cars oh the battery packs listen folks it's not that bad. You can fix the batteries yourself. You can actually replace the individual cells in the back here that are dead. You can find the dead cells and you can replace them yourself and they're dirt cheap. I think you could buy each cell for like $15, $20 or something like that. It's ridiculous. These are great cars. They really are. Oh, come on, man. I at least wanted to start it. I really did. Yeah, I really, I really at least wanted to start it up. At least then we could see if you get a, uh, the, you know, the red triangle of death on the screen there. But let's take a look under the hood and see how things look under there. Um, I can tell you the front tire here looks brand spanking new. And the back tire over here looks equally new. You can tell a lot about a car by looking at the tires, people. Another tire looks practically new as well. And same thing with this one. Another great looking tire. This is one that's not a popular car. It's not something that's gonna have people knocking down your door. I already, I already opened the hood, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? I haven't seen this before. Maxit Hybrid Repair, Maintenance Services, HU Battery Rebuild, 36 to 90,000 Services, Computer Diagnostics, Heating and Cooling. Huh. This is a fairly recent looking sticker. And since this is a hybrid repair company, this did not come factory on the car, folks. I do wonder, this makes me wonder, if somebody has uh, already done something with the battery pack back here. Oh, they have. They have. I can see. Okay, so we've got the battery is connected. And you can see this is all out of sorts. This isn't how it originally came. So somebody has been into the battery pack back here. Whew. I'm kind of feeling this one. I really am. I really am. I mean, come on folks, 230,000 miles. Doesn't this thing look great? <laughs> I, I can't lie, as much as I don't really want to like Toyota, I really do, I really do. And this one, 
the first gen is not plagued with the issues that the third gen was. And I'll tell you about those in just a second. Uh, the third gen, the one I have, is notorious for just burning oil. My third gen Prius with 144,000 miles on it burns about two quarts of oil every two, well, we'll just to make it simple, a thousand, a thousand miles to a quart of oil. So you gotta check the oil pretty regularly on that thing. Check the oil on this one. Oh, golden, golden. The oil is clean. Let's check the uh, coolant. Nice and orange like it's supposed to be. And above the L, which stands for low, here's the inverter coolant right here. And it looks orange. It's slightly below the low line, but nothing I'd be too concerned about. Now, why do you think this is here? Originally, I suspected every time I see a Prius here and it's a donation or something, I always suspect it's the battery pack. And if I buy it, I just assume that I'm going to have to handle that myself. But I don't think this is going to have a battery pack issue. I really, really don't. This is not a bad looking car. It could be better, but it could also be a hell of a lot worse. I'm interested in this. Comment below and tell me what you think of the Gen 1 Prius. Here's a car that would be great for something like Toro. This is a bank repossession. Buy it now, it's 2,900 bucks. Look at this. 104,000 miles on the odometer, which is well within uh, the 130,000 mile cap to add a car to Toro. Now, the car can have 129,999 miles on it. You can add it to Toro and it can be on the Toro platform for three, 400,000 miles, as long as it's maintained and in good and decent condition. So this is a great car, leather interior. The tires look excellent. The body is not great, but it's, it's usable. You got clear peeling on the back bumper here. A few dings, definitely got a decent scrape right here. A ding there. But on Toro cars, you don't worry too much about minor dings and dents. You don't want anything that's gonna make it look so ugly people don't wanna rent it but this isn't too bad this isn't too bad at all a few dings and dents are to be expected on a rental car this is listed as a run and drive unfortunately i don't have 2900 dollars in my budget at the moment all right fired right up of course check engine light low fuel check engine that's all and low tire <laughs> low tire all right fired right up i can already feel the cold air conditioning i can even hear the air conditioning kick on you can hear the compressor coming on yeah wow this really isn't bad for 2900 bucks goes right into gear All right, let's have a look under the hood here. Oh, it's the V6. Ooh, I don't like this big red wire here. I don't know exactly what that's, what that's doing, what they got going on there. Huh, okay. Well, you can't really see any of the engine. They've got it all covered up with plastic. There's no dipstick for the uh, transmission. The oil dipstick, I'm not even touching that. It has a Phillips head screw in it, and look how wobbly. So we're not even going to attempt to pull that out. I'm not going to be responsible for damaging it. Things like that concern me. You know, when you, when you rig up a dipstick, how good could you have really taken care of the car? What kind of maintenance could you have possibly performed on it if you can't even replace a dipstick? How about a 1962 Chevy Impala SS? This is a car that looks like somebody went to a lot of trouble to practically restore it, and then they just stopped. What a beautiful car. Beautiful, $14,000 is the buy it now price on this. I think most of your trim is in the trunk. The trunk pan is, is solid. The chrome looks good. Beautiful car. Got a couple little dents in the trim right here. Nothing major though. It's not show quality by any stretch of the imagination. 
but it's a beautiful specimen. Cracked windshield. Get you under the hood here real quick. I don't want to open the hood too far. These hood hinges are known to bend. So I don't want to do anything like that. Look at this beautiful engine. Some reason they kept the original exhaust manifolds. I would have put headers on this thing, but you know, hey, to each their own, no air conditioning, obviously. What a beautiful car. The engine looks like it's a fresh motor. Gently close this hood here. There we go. Take a look at the interior. Beautiful interior as well. Look at this door panel. I mean, what a beautiful car, right? I love it. Love, love, love it. The carpet looks new. The leather looks new. Isn't it beautiful? I know it's dark. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. There's limited light in here. 14 grand, folks. Got a little bit of scratching over here. Still, beautiful car. Absolutely beautiful. Got some paint damage right here where it's a little, uh, little wavy. Overall, though, what a nice daily driver. I, I would be driving this on the regular, folks. I'm not sure why I'm even recording this one. This is a 94 Dodge Ram. This is the conversion van. It's one of those things college students in California buy to live in because they cannot afford housing. It's really sad, but it's true. It's a beautiful, beautiful van on the inside. Look at this. I love these. I really do. I guess I'm kind of a new old school. It's listed as a run and drive, and unfortunately, we're not going to fire it up because it's dead as a doornail. 244,000 miles on the odometer. Is that a speedometer cable or a CB radio? That's a CB radio antenna right there. Yeah, she's not in the greatest shape. Not in the greatest shape. Smells kind of funky. And the paint is all but gone. Still, somebody could get some use out of this. Great camping van. Looks like somebody, sand, look at that. Yeah, somebody knew what to do with this. They put this to work. They went out to the beach. Really though, it's not pretty. At least not on the outside, but the interior is very nice. It really smells, it, it's, it's very musty. It smells like this thing has been sitting for 20 years. Look at your tape player. You got Nice little tape player down there. A Magnavox television up here. <laughs> a VCR over there. Oh man, this thing's rocking. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't think we're gonna do any more looking at this one. We're about to the end of this walk around video anyway. And to conclude this video, one more Carnage vehicle, 2005 Chevy. What did you run into, brother? Look at that. I mean, it doesn't appear there was anybody in the passenger side at the time of the accident. Obviously, there's no blood. There's not even a deployed airbag over here. This thing may not have even been driving on the road at all. This may have been a case of something just fell on it or somebody hit it. I don't know. Thankfully, I don't see any blood in here. But look at this. Look at the way this roof just... I mean, what? What does that? Crazy. Crazy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this week's Copart Walk Around. I want to give a big shout out to Copart's corporate office and Copart right here locally in Oklahoma City, Yard 18. I appreciate all of you here. The management here is awesome. The ladies up front, awesome. Everybody's very helpful, very friendly here. So don't be afraid to come out if you're local and have a look around. Do not screw 
with these cars. Don't try to take parts, don't try to take keys. You can find some excellent deals if you're careful about how you bid and you go out there and take a look at these cars for yourself in person. I highly recommend you go check out your local Copart auction. You won't regret it. Have a good one, everybody. And most importantly, after seeing all this carnage today, please, please stay safe out there. We'll catch you very soon in the next one. Hopefully we win something tomorrow.